Hello and welcome back to Rise Gaming and once again, welcome back to Rise. Or should I say, welcome to Rise. Those of you playing the game on console as it's now releasing on Xbox and PlayStation, finally. However, this is a specific version of Rise and quite a unique one at that because there's a lot of benefits that you can have as a new player compared to us that played at the original launch all the way back when it launched on Switch. All the updates are there, all the event quests, all the benefits to a new player. So honestly, you guys are going to have the most smooth and best version of original Rise that has existed so far. Going into that, you should know some things that will help you as a new player. With that said, let's just jump into the video. We'll start with the things outside of the game that you should going in. Firstly, the fact that Rise is now on Game Pass, which is pretty incredible if you're interested in the game even slightly because it means you're going to have access to the game for significantly cheaper. Basically, if you don't know what the Game Pass is, it's uh, about 300 plus games that are on a current sort of roster and by paying a subscription, you get access to all of those. So it's obviously ridiculous value. It's pretty much the best value we even have for anything in gaming as a whole. So if you are interested in Rise and you have access to say the Game Pass with Microsoft or Xbox, that'd be a very smart way to try the game and get the game. Plus, my understanding is that after a game leaves the current Game Pass roster, which will, you know, be there for a long time, you'd be able to buy the games that you've got installed through Game Pass for a really strong discount, which would allow you to keep access to it in the very long term for a lot cheaper than straight buying it. Secondly, we have cross saves. You might be coming from, say, Switch or PC and playing on a console version and would like to know if you can do cross save. The PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 versions, which are bundled together, meaning you only need to buy one to play the other, those will be able to cross save and swap saves between PS5 and PS4. If you're on Microsoft, so Xbox One, Series X and S, or the Windows version, then you can cross save between all of those. As you can see, it's explained in this image by the official Monster on a Twitter page. However, that does mean if it's not listed in this image or what I just explained, then you can't do cross save. So Switch is not an option, sadly. And then lastly, quickly, a word on the current version of the game. Sunbreak will not be dropping with this release, but it will be following before long. Officially, it will drop in spring 2023, so it's not far away. What we have here instead is the original Rise, but with the three major title updates that are going to be right there to begin with, meaning you can go to the final bosses like All Mother and Valstrax and so on to have a proper endgame experience at launch, which those of us that played at Switch at launch did not have. We kind of had an unfinished experience. It felt like a lot of 2.0, 3.0 Rise should have really been there at launch. But for you guys, you're going to have the smoothest and best version of that, the full story immediately and the end game. So this is arguably the best version of the game we've seen so far. But with that stuff explained, let's get into some more specific gameplay tips for you guys as you load into Rise for the first time. What should you be aware of? What's going to help you have a much smoother experience. Let's go into that. Let's get you started first with your equipment, which you're going to be able to pick up pretty much immediately from loading in and getting to Kimura for the first time. You'll want to go straight to this guy, Senri the Mailman, to pick up your rewards. By selecting add-on content, it'll check what is available. And as you can see, there will be seven pages of stuff, including event quests, challenge quests, and so on, and other downloadable content you might have access to. But most importantly, what you want to pick up is things like the Legacy Talisman, the Palicos, and Palamutes, the launch celebration pack, which will give us a lot of early game resources like Mega Potions we'll really want, the welcome sets one and two, again, further materials, and the Guild Cross Hunter armor set. That is what I'm wearing right now. Not only does it look cool, it provides you with some very important defensive stats and skills that are really beneficial to a brand new character with no resources. We can access this by just going to any item box and going manage equipment, change equipment, and then we can literally pick Guild Cross and put it all on. You'll originally start with your Kimura set, which isn't necessarily a bad set. It just starts with one defense on each part compared to the 24 defense on each of these pieces. So obviously it's a major upgrade. Then you have things like the skills available on the set. The set comes with Geologist, Botanist, Hunger Resistance, Wall Runner, Marathon Runner, Carving Pro and Wirebug Whisperer. The Geologist, Botanist and the Wirebug Whisperer and also the Carving Pro. These are going to be really nice for a brand new player. Geologist and Botanist basically give you more resources when you get gather things like herbs or mining, whereas level one wirebug whisperer will mean you keep a wirebug 30% longer, which is going to be incredible in your general gameplay. With your guild cross set equipped though, you're also going to want to make sure you equip your legacy talisman, the one we just got from the downloadable content. Then we have your weapons of choice. You will begin with a basic version of all 14 weapons to try and test with, but if you're certain you know which to go with to start with, then 
picking a weapon to upgrade is going to be very, very good. For example, you'll start with the Kimura Glint Blades, which even these upgraded have 60 attack and yellow sharpness. The champion version though, these have green sharpness and as you can see, much higher attack, 150 compared to 60. To forge or upgrade a weapon, you just need to pick that option at the top and then pick your weapon of choice. Next, we have some really important details to do with what's behind me, the Buddy Plaza, which is on the east or right side of the village. From here, you can access a lot of different things, but the most important thing I would say to get going immediately is your submarine, aka your farm. As you can see, I only have one submarine right now, but you can get up to three by completing the playthrough and doing the submarine requests. Rondine here will actually give you those requests, but you want to get these going immediately under trade requests with her. Here you can select a pile of different materials used for very important item crafting that you're going to need these resources for. I would recommend though you start with honey because it's used to craft your mega potions, which will probably be the main way you heal in your original playthrough. And it's also used in crafting other things like like catalysts, so it's probably the best thing you can possibly go for. Once you've got that confirmed though, you want to go to Buddy Bargaining, which can then spend points to further improve the amount uh, of items you get from a submarine or how fast it actually completes. It only costs a bit of points to do and is well worth doing. But as you can see, we have two submarine slots locked still here. and We want to get these unlocked as soon as possible. Now I've jumped over to my main save on PC. And as you can see, I've got three submarines now, which means we have access to many more items at once and I'm getting way more honey. And as my Palamutes and Palicos are a lot higher level, that means I can actually do a lot more than just a casual or speedy bargain, but I can do things like blinding or breakneck to really get a more items more effectively. To get the other submarines unlocked then, you'll need to progress and get higher hunter rank, and then you'll be offered these requests from Rondine here at the Argozi. These are the quests, cultural exchange and economic stimulation. For specific details and guides on how to complete these, you can always Google it, but essentially it comes down to picking up the rare materials in each of the maps and handing those over to Rondine to get the submarine unlocked. Another thing you can find here in the Buddy Plaza is this very important tree at the back, which you can run behind and literally just run up and climb on these vines, no problem. What's up here is a Kohoot nest, which is currently filling up at this time. As you can see, it only has a few items in it and a single egg. Every time I progress time by going on an expedition or going on a hunt, this will fill up slightly more. And I can return to this tree and gather like that wet fish item I just got to get some free rewards for crafting and otherwise. It can also give you eggs that you can sell for money, which is very important, but it'll cap out after roughly five different hunts or progressions of time. So as long as you return to this nest, roughly every five hunts, you'll be getting lots of items consistently for free. So why not? Next, a very quick tip to do with your camera and also how you sheath your weapon. To unsheath your weapon, you just need to do an attack and that'll bring it out and then you can get fighting. Then to sheath, you can either try to use an item like this potion or I can try to sprint and that'll immediately put my weapons away. However, when you're first playing the game, you'll notice that automatically your hunter is going to put their weapon away at certain intervals, which can be really annoying mid-fight just because you've not attacked for a little bit of time. This is actually a setting under your controls, which is really annoying and for some reason is the default. And I really strongly recommend that one of the first things you do before you play is turn off auto sheath and put it on manual sheath, which you can find under settings in the controls tab. I also recommend you go to camera settings here as well and take your camera distance from zero to 100. The reason that I always do this is that it zooms out the camera, giving me more space to actually work with and see what's going on. This allows me to avoid attacks, see attacks coming in from behind, say from of the monsters or small monsters. And in general, being zoomed out makes my life easier. So it's probably one of the strongest tips I can give you. Now a quick tip to do with camps. As you can see, you'll start your playthrough on every map with a base camp, but there are actually other camps on the map. Sometimes there are multiple, which allows you to fast travel to different points, restock, and in general is a really convenient and important thing. But these will not activate until you go to them for the first time. So you must search each map to find these camps, which will basically be a campfire that's been used a long time ago and is burnt out. You can see on the right, it says I've discovered a suitable location for a sub camp by interacting with that. By returning to the village, the shop merchant will talk to us about the camp, providing us with a request to go do something on that map. Often it's go loot specific items or kill specific small monsters that can be found on that map. So while you're on a hunt on that map, make sure to go do that request, whether that's picking up the special items or killing the specific monsters. And when that's complete, you can talk to Kagero, the shop merchant again, 
hand that in, and from then on, that sub camp will now be active as a fast travel point, a restock point, a re-equip point, and in general, again, really important to do this as soon as possible, the moment you first find a map, find the camps. You can look it up or have fun looking for it yourself, but make sure you do it as soon as you're first playing a new map. Next, we have a tip to do with your switch skills and your siltbind attacks, which you will unlock by simply progressing the game. Once you reach Hunter Rank 2, for example, you'll get your first switch skill swap. So I begin with Dual Blades with Demon Flurry Rush, but Demon Flight is arguably better for your DPS, and I've now unlocked it, so I've swapped to that. But you can unlock them in other ways, two ways that are manual rather than just happening as you progress the story. So the first one is to actually craft eight of that specific weapon. So I want more dual blade switch skills and silk bind attacks, so I need to make eight dual blades. Now what I can actually do is forge an upgrade to an existing weapon, and that counts as one build. I recommend you upgrade the Kimura tree because they're often easier materials, the ore tree because that's just from mining which you should be doing pretty much whenever you see an ore to begin with especially, and much the same the bone tree because you'll be picking bones up from the bone piles while you're out on hunts anyway. Now I've crafted or upgraded my eight weapons of the weapon of choice, I now have a yellow question mark conversation here in the gathering hub which will be with your trainer. Utsuchi here will then just give you the switch skill. In this case it was feral demon mode so now I have access to that. So on the other hand, with the training of switch skills and getting your silkbind attacks, another way to do that is to simply progress the game. As you progress your rank, you will reach high rank, and that's the point where you're going to be able to get a specific quest for your specific weapon. So once you reach four stars in high rank, you'll be offered the quests for Sword and Shield, Hunting Horn, Switch Axe, and Lightbow Gun. By completing, say, the Lightbow Gun, you will unlock a new switch skill for the Lightbow Gun. Then five star, you're going to unlock the next set, which is Great Sword, Hammer, Lance, and charge blade and heavy bow gun. Then at six star, you'll unlock the options for the long sword, the jewel blades, the gun lance, the insect glaive, and finally the bow. You might just get unlucky like I did with jewel blades and have to reach the higher ranks and the higher stars to finally be offered your quest. Another quick detail is your companions, your buddies, and what you should probably be running to begin with. I always recommend that you run a gatherer palico, or gathering, as you can see, this is the type that it is. And by leveling up this palico, once it reaches level 20, you'll unlock the pilfer perk, which as you can see, is an attack that steals materials from monsters. This gets you extra resources to craft weapons and armor with a lot faster, and in an early playthrough, getting this as soon as possible is gonna make your life so much easier. If you did not pick a palico that is a gatherer, you can fix that by coming here to the buddy plaza and speaking to the buddy scout. By choosing scout a buddy, you can pick your palico, then change your criteria as to what you need, choose support type, and pick gathering. From then on, as you go to hire palicos from the trainer, it'll be what you've picked. So I picked bombardier, so these are all bombardier options. And that way you can get yourself a gathering palico or multiple should you need it. Now, one thing that's going to come up as you're going through your playthrough are these very important items. Permanent upgrades to how much damage you do and how much defense you have. These are the power charms and the armor charms, and then the power talon and armor talons. Basically, the power charm and the armor charm, by being in your inventory during a hunt, will increase your attack and defense. At a certain point, Kagero, your merchant, he will begin offering you the power charm and armor charms, which is 24,000 zenny and 36,000 zenny. So 60,000 total required to buy both of these. The moment these are available, you want to buy them and immediately put them in your pouch so you're carrying them permanently. Then eventually you're going to come across a monster called Ibushi, and by using Ibushi's claws, you're going to be able to craft yourself a more powerful power charm or armor charm called the Power Talon and the Armor Talon. These provide higher attack and defense bonuses than the regular, say, armor charm. But the thing is, you can then buy another power charm and another armor charm, so all four are in your inventory in your pouch at all times, boosting your attack and your defense by a much greater sum than not having any of these. They're permanent benefits, though, as long as they're in your inventory. So as soon as they're available, as soon as you can craft them, you should do so. And finally, one small tip that I want to reference for your long-term gameplay is again what we have to play at the launch of this console version. In the adult content, you can pick up 
all of the event quests of the entire original Rise all the way up until Sunbreak. And within that, this allows you to target specific monsters that might otherwise be hard or annoying to reach, especially those apex monsters that are often hidden behind Rampage quests that you need to get much later in the playthrough. And the rewards for these are pretty cool, like sticker sets and gestures. Once you've downloaded these though, you can go to the gathering hub and go to the hub quest made in here and pick event quests. And then we have low rank and high rank. And this allows us to go for specific monsters we might otherwise not have access to yet, or might have a hard time accessing, like I said, apex monsters. This can also let you access monsters much earlier than you normally would, such as this Siostra, which would probably kick my butt right now, but once I'm ready, it's right there. So long term, make use of your event quests to save yourself a lot of problems getting to certain monsters. But there you have it, that covers my tips and things to know going into the console release of Rise and this new version. Everything you should need to know beforehand and going into it, as well as a lot of new player tips that should hopefully help you in your own playthroughs. In fact, if you guys have any tips that might help a brand new player to Rise that I haven't mentioned in this video, then let me know in the comments. You might just help someone who reads it. Until next time then, I've been Hollow, you've been you. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye